I hear? So this owl is a picture that I found. I actually bought it and it came with a bunch of other owls. I believe it is a Laura Irish pattern. And anyway, I want to make this into an enclosure. So let's get started. So I started writing down what I thought would be good for the colors. I have some okay. I'm not sure what this is. Rats, I'm going to have some walnut. And a thicker walnut. And some cobbler, some yellow heart, some asco, and some orange. Yay! And I've made a bunch of copies for all the different colors. So I'm just going to cut those out now and put them on the pieces of wood. Yay! So I cut all the pieces that go with the corresponding color and then used 3M77 spray adhesive on them. And I put the pieces on the wood, taking into consideration the grain direction of the wood. This pattern isn't an intarsia pattern, so I'm guessing along the way, but then it's also exciting because it's possible that no one else has ever made it into an intarsia. Here are all the boards with their pieces on them. Then I started sawing away on the Hegner scroll saw with a number five Pegasus modified geometry blade. Down in the description box is a link to an Amazon store that I was able to set up. In there are most of the items that I use or something similar. If it's not in the store, I'll make sure a separate link is in the box for you down below. Some things I can't find on Amazon like the Pegasus modified geometry blades. So I'll leave a separate link. Here's a trick I was privy to recently and I'm able to do this on many areas of this project. See how this leaf has a bunch of segmented pieces? Instead of sawing each piece apart, you can saw the piece three quarters or more of the way, like this. Then you can shape the entire piece, then saw them apart once they've been shaped. You will still need to shape some after you've cut them apart, but not as much. And then there is no need for a sanding sham. Pretty cool stuff. Always finding out new ways to do stuff. I love it. And here are all the pieces with some tunes to listen to. Then I use mineral spirits to soften up the papers and they come off pretty easily. Well, I'm trying to set the camera up so that you can see the owl and see the sander. Um, so I'm still trying to work on that. I know I do this all the time, but um, anyway, I just thought I'd try to do it like from up a high or something. So I'm still working on it. Yeah, I think that'll work. Woo! Then I started sanding away on the pneumatic drum sander. Here I am shaping the pieces and it shapes quickly with a hundred grit paper on the drum. I'll speed it up. This is 30 minutes of shaping at 70 times the speed in just a few seconds. Then I used a small can of air to blow off a lot of the sawdust. I had to be careful not to blow away any of the small pieces. Oops. Then I glued together those orange and yellow eyelets in the wings to make things easier. My work surface is a slab of granite. It is super smooth and flat and it's heavy, but I can move it around the shop from area to area. So I moved it back to my other table and started on the tip of the wing, sawing apart that section into the segmented pieces. Then I shaped them a bit more with 100 grit, then sanded them with 220 on the flex drum. Then I did the same process for the next sections, sawing and shaping the segments. And again, and again, and again. The orange and yellow eyelets were going to be a challenge and I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to manage it. So I just started shaping and sanding them along with the wing feathers. So far so good, except I was going to have to figure something out with the gaps around the orange and yellow pieces. You can also see a backer board that I had cut out for the owl, but I decided not to use that after all. For now, I moved on sawing the other sections into their segmented pieces. 
The yellow heart feathers around the eye were pretty challenging. I had written numbers on the tops and the bottoms of the pieces, and for now, the numbers on top were great. But soon, I would be sanding more, and I'll have to look on the bottom to see where they go. So I'm just glad I numbered them. I did end up using sanding shims on some things. For the belly feathers, I sanded them individually, then decided to use the shim to make them flow together a bit more. So I did this the opposite way I should have, but that is the way it goes most of the time. Whatever works. I am going to uh, glue this together and I might put some colored resin in between these gaps. <laughs> uh, I think it might look cool actually. So I'm going to try it and if it messes it up then I'm going to have to cut these pieces out again but you know what it might just be worth it. So yeah let's do it. Just do a little bit of super glue here. First, I tacked together the feathers with some DAP super glue. Then, well, this is gonna be interesting. I'm really not sure uh, what I'm doing exactly, but um, I'm gonna try it. So I'm going to, I, I, I put the tape on here just to keep that from sticking to it. I put some duct tape upside down so I could stick all the pieces on it together, then used a couple of rubber bands to squeeze them together. I used some walnut sawdust and mixed it with Starbond black glue and filled the spaces around the orange and yellow eyelets. Starbond gave me a link a few years ago and it still works to get 10% off if you buy Starbond glue with the coupon code SIZE CORNER. I thought that was so very cool of them. Okay, that looks pretty, whew, pretty bad. So I'm very curious to see how it's going to look. <laughs> I might be making all these pieces over again, but we'll see. It might look cool. We don't know. Then I kept sanding until I decided to quit for the night. Ah, here it is. Let's take a look at it. First I used 100 grit on the big sander. It was very fumy, so I was glad to have my power cap headgear. Then I used the Dremel type tool to shape and sand the areas that were tricky to reach. It was looking rough, but I was liking it so far. Then I was back to the yellow feathers, shaping with 220 on the flex drum and 220 hand sanding. and I finally had it all shaped and sanded and ready to put it all together. Next, I added a verse to the back of the piece of wood I'm using for the backer. I lasered it on with my Ortur laser. I put Proverbs 1717, which says, a friend loves at all times. Then I moved it all to the backer board, getting ready to start gluing. I used tight bond, quick and thick, and started gluing the pieces. I glued the large sections of the wing first, then after those were nice and set, I started gluing the rest of it. If you have been watching me over time, you know that this is how I used to do my projects. I used to glue the pieces to the backer and then spray a finish on. I don't do it this way usually anymore. Now I put Old Masters Poly Gel on each piece and then I glue the pieces together. But for this owl, I decided to glue it first, then spray it with polyurethane. And this is because there were so many small pieces and it gets so confusing to where they go. So it just makes it easier for me. It's nice to have options of how to do these things. And I think it will do great with the polyurethane. All right, I'm gonna be spraying it. Woo! Here it is. So I'm gonna spray with polyurethane and I was a little bit concerned because it's so cold in the shop right now because of our pillow stove is it off until we get a certain part for it. So it's 55 in here. 
But this just says, um, talks about dry times, and it says uh, that at 77 degrees, where is it ever 77 degrees? <laughs> Hardly ever 77 degrees in this shop. But it says that, it doesn't say, it just says that it will take longer to dry the cooler the temperature. So, 55 it is. And I put on two coats of polyurethane. I did the first coat and then because it was 55, I waited an hour and then I did the second coat. And then I attached this D-ring picture hanger. And I just had to make sure that it was in the middle of the project or in the right spot to make the project hang straight. So thanks for following along everybody and like I said earlier I have a link in the description box below to an Amazon store and the Amazon store is just full of all of the products and links to the products that I use or I like to use and the store is really cool because then I don't have to put all those links in my description box every time. So it's just one link and you can go. However, I can't find everything in the Amazon store so I have I do have links down there for things that um, aren't in the store for some reason. And thank you so much for following along and we'll see you next time. Bye!